Rudy, have you noticed that consumers are buying more goods from local farms? Yeah, actually, I've noticed um, a bunch of the boxes being delivered to apartment mm -hmm. buildings all well, the time. Well, yeah, IDTV paid a visit to Clark Summit, a local example of a sustainable farm located up in Tamales Bay. Tamales Bay, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, and the animals are grass-fed. They free-range and all live together. Cows, chickens, pigs. That's pretty Orwellian. No? Huh? The author, George Orwell, he warned us about this. It starts with free-ranging. Then they boot the farmer out, then the pigs start walking upright, then they take box of the horse, they send him to a glue factory, and then- Rudy, Animal Farm is an allegory, a political fable, and Clark Summit is a real, real farm, and they're doing great things. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know, I just, just had a whole flashback to my freshman English class, and just, it was a, a big thing. You, you don't want to read the book report, trust me. Let's just, let's move on to Clark Summit. Let's see what they're doing. Here today we are at Clark Summit Farm to check how farming can be sustainable. Let's visit with Liz Cunningham. I'm Liz Cunningham and this is my farm, Clark Summit Farm, and my husband Dan Bagley and I have been running this business for 10 years. It's been my family for three generations, almost 100 years. Come on chickens! Come on chickens! So we have different types of animals here in your farm, very different types. Mm -hmm. And why did you choose to mix all the animals like this? Um, well, it's better for the better for the pastures and it's better for the animals, I think. And also we're really basically going back to the way farmers farmed 80 years ago. What we're modeling it after is uh, keeping a farm small and sustainable. We are very diversified. We have uh, chickens, we have organic laying hens, and we have grass-finished beef, and we've got pastured pigs. And all our animals are out in the open on pasture, um, truly free-range. Cows are completely grass-fed. They eat, um, they just graze on the pasture. We supplement them with, with hay in the winter. The pigs probably only consume about 15-20% of their diet from the grain, the rest is from the whey and the pasture and hay. Chickens um, probably consume 60-70% of the grain as their, as their diet. When the grasses are green for six months out of the year, they're eating a lot of grass. Organic grain, it uh, consists mainly of soy, wheat, and corn. We're sustainable, I guess, because we grow as much of, you know, of our pasture to feed our animals as we can. What we do bring in is local, like the grain is, is milled locally. It's not grown locally because California doesn't grow a lot of grains. Um, but the whey is local. It just comes from a um, small little artisan creamery just down the road. The animals, um, you know, drop their manure on the soil, and uh, if you have a um, variety of species doing that on your pastures, it's, it's a lot better for your pastures. This is really beautiful country out here. It's really prime um, pasture area because we're very moderate climate being um, so close to the ocean. My like true goal is I want to see these beautiful countryside stay in small farms. I put my cards on the table, now the lights on. I just might not ever make another song because it's serious. No time for gimmicks. Be different as me.
know I got phone calls from some friends of mine who watch show number one on YouTube. Oh, that's true. After we are on EATV, you can find us on YouTube. Uh -huh. I think if you search greatest show ever, we're the first one that pops up. <laughs> right. So Very in a way, one. we are archived. You're right. Right. Being archived means that 500 years from now, someone may search for IDTV 2011 show 2, and boom, we come alive. Immortality. <laughs> Right, well, IDTV visited the Internet Archive, an incredible open source digital library located right here in San Francisco for a behind the scenes look. Rudy, how many books besides Animal Farm do you own? Besides Animal Farm? I mean, is there any other book worth owning? No, um, hundreds and probably thousands of comic books. Well, the Internet Archive has almost three million books in their digital library and lots of other media. Take a look. <laughs> the Internet Archive aims to preserve our cultural history and artifacts, and we have a vast collection of materials on archive.org. One of the ones that I was able to work on and I'm very proud of is the John Adams collection from the Boston Public Library. Uh, one of our early presidents, we had his entire library from when he was a child to his older days. And, he was a prolific note taker. This collection was kept in an air conditioned room behind lock and key and glass and we were able to put that online and make it available to everybody. Hi, my name is Brewster Kale. I'm founder of the digital library called the Internet Archive. I founded this with Bruce Gilliatt back in 1996 to build a digital library. You know, a modern equivalent of the Library of Alexandria, the Library of Alexandria version two. The idea is to have all books all music, all video, all web pages, all software ever produced by people and make that available to everybody, anybody that wants it anywhere for free. The Internet Archive has over two million books online and to do that we had to partner with um, amazing library institutions all around the world. We have 23 scanning centers including one right here in San Francisco. This is our San Francisco Scanning Center, one of 23 operated by the Internet Archive. At this scanning center, we're digitizing books and microfilm Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. till midnight. Let's take a look at how it all happens. This is one of our scanning machines. We call it a scribe. And when I say scanning, maybe that's a bit of a misnomer. What we're actually doing is taking pictures of the text with these high-res digital cameras. Another interesting thing about our scanning machine is this floating cradle. As you can see, the angle exerted on the book itself is pretty gentle. We aim to scan all our materials non-destructively. Another media type we digitize is microfilm, prominent in the 70s for archiving newsprints, periodicals, genealogical materials. We're very happy to digitize and put this online so that researchers and your average patron don't have to go to the material itself, but can now have access via an internet connection. The Internet Archive can be really useful to the students and professors and community of the City College and, and beyond as free hosting. It's a place to go and put your creative works to have it be permanently available. So we take, say, videos like this one and we'll put it on the Internet Archive and continue to transmute it into the new video formats so that when the iPhone came out, we made it sure that all the videos that had been uploaded were recoded to work on those formats. So it's a place to put things that are permanent that other people can have access to and also to draw from so that if you have new productions you want to go and use, it's a place to find inspiring books, music, video, videos um, that you can go and reuse, uh, free stock footage, all sorts of fun and interesting things. So an archive.org is this sort of free resource. The other is openlibrary.org. Openlibrary.org is kind of a Wikipedia of books. So you can actually get to go and download and see uh, and read books that are current books as well as old books and be able to have access.